beautiful, chilly March morning. two weeks now oh my god for 10 days I've been sick in bed and hello welcome I was completely sick stuck in bed for two weeks and then spent another week um, just barely able to function, get out of bed, do anything. So I was like out for three weeks. I know it is a huge, huge thing in the new age spirituality wellness community to have a very specific idea of how bodies should look, how bodies should work and that includes the brain and the brain function and you know neurodiversity neurodivergence but this this sort of common idea that we encounter about what bodies should look like how they should function is um it's it's really based in white supremacy and a lot of it comes from you know really old european schools of eugenics and the things that the Nazis were promoting. So we as yogis, modern people, <laughs> diverse people, religious Hindus, and you know really anyone should be dropping these old ideas about how bodies should look and how bodies should work. Yoga, yoga is a system that is very, very ancient and has a lot of um, openness to the natural human physical diversity that exists. I want to read a little bit from the Garanda Samhita. This is a classical yoga text. I have another video that I did a few years back reading the same passage from the Garanda Samhita. Um, this is Swami Niranjananda Saraswati's uh, commentary on it. This comes from the Bihar Yoga School, and his commentary is part of their sannyas training program. So that's, that's what this is coming from. And it's coming from the chapter on Basti, which covers verse 45. Uh, in my edition, it's page 107, where this begins, on the causes of ill health. And page 108, yoga accepts that even yogis fall sick. It is seen in the lives of many accomplished sadhakas that even after attaining a higher state, it is disease that takes their bodies. For example, Ramakrishna Paramahamsa has throat cancer. It is known that other yogis had paralysis, cardiac arrest, and brain hemorrhage. There is a tendency to think that people who have done yogic practices for many years, who have purified their bodies and achieved something in life by reaching a special state, should be able to control physical disease. There are also examples of yogis being able to rid themselves of bodily diseases, whether by yogic practices or by making use of their cities. There is a difference between the suppression of disease and the eradication of disease in a natural way. Keeping this in mind, Sage Garanda says that if any organ in the body suffers from a disease, it should not be taken to mean that there is any shortcoming in one's practice. It is a natural process of life. At such times, courage and awareness need to be developed. So there's, there's, there's a lot more in there that I don't think is necessarily relevant at the moment. But that is an important thing to remember when experiencing disease, when encountering, when encountering other people with chronic illnesses, diseases, or disabilities that this is a natural process. It is a part of taking a human body and coming to birth 
on planet Earth and living in this world of Maya. And it's simply something that happens for reasons that we may not understand. And certainly, um, unless you're some sort of, you know, elevated enlightened being, there's no way that you could possibly understand why someone else's body is the way it is. Now, my guru, in one of his satsangs, if I can find it, I'll link it, you should not be afraid of changes happening in your body. You should not fear changes that happen in your body, and that is a natural part of the process of life. Because in addition to any sort of disease or illness or disability that we might encounter in our youth or in our middle age, at some point in time, we're going to get old and the body is naturally going to start to end its processes. At some point in time, age is going to catch up with us and the body will naturally end if we don't encounter some other you know accident or something earlier in life and even the idea that life should be a certain number of years um we we know from experience that a lot of people die young of illnesses and accidents die in middle age of illnesses and accidents and some people have the fortune to live very long lives. That is all a part of natural human diversity. And especially now, having come through a global pandemic, um, that virus did not discriminate. Our systems of health and wellness certainly discriminated. And so for any of you who are out there dealing with chronic illness or disability or have people in your lives like that, I hope you will be more compassionate towards yourself and other people and, you know, learn about the function of ableism, prejudice against people that are disabled or chronically ill in society. Hello, welcome to the dog walk. And um, I had an interesting conversation with one of my neighbors who has a dog that's friends with my dog and we were talking about um, gratitude and how things are tough right now but we have we have a lot to be grateful for and staying in the space of gratitude um, really helps with you know improving your mood and um, staying positive in difficult times what is it my dog let's go and I have talked about gratitude before on this channel and I just want to say one thing that um, I've never heard really publicly spoken about is how staying in the space of gratitude helps with a third eye and this was um, something I experienced at the ashram uh, at the Adenum during the Third Eye Awakening programs trying to help people um, you know manifest the Third Eye powers and I'm like stay in the space of gratitude you know and it it worked it works staying in a space of gratitude to to the guru to the divine to your deity um, it, it really makes a huge difference when manifesting the third eye and uh, I just wanted to, to tell you all about that because um, you know that's that's one thing about the third eye that people don't I've never heard anyone talk about the third eye opening and awakening from gratitude so keep keep that in mind 